blog does something we've never done before. Instead of me taking you around, we have 19 foreigners from all across the world showing us a slice of their city in China that they currently call home. This is just one show of a three-part special you cannot miss. Join us in Hangzhou. And welcome back to our Hangzhou special in the city that Marco Polo was enthralled by and absolutely captivated and he wrote a lot about in his book. But that was 700 years ago. We've got the new updated version brought to you by foreigners from all across the globe and they live here in Hangzhou and love it perhaps even more than he does. My name's Dui. Join me on Travelogue. Oh, please come on. Zoe, tell me what. And your daughter? Yes, Zoe. Nice to meet you. Zoe. Zoe. Zoe and Zoe. Zoe and Zoe. Zoe and Zoe. Ciao. My name is Cristina. I come from Italy. I live here in Anjo almost by one year, almost. And uh, with my family, my two kids, and uh, my husband. Uh, I love to stay here and I love the uh, atmosphere of Hanjo uh, when I walk around the, the, the lake or j when uh, I just go around uh, to discover new place to see. It's really a co big contrast between uh, uh, the modernity and the tradition here. So that is what I like more as well as uh, the people that I meet every day. Of course it's not so easy, it's always a challenge, a challenge with uh, the with the, the word where to learn how to speak is quite impossible, but still is a, is a fantastic uh, journey. Christine is the seventh on our foreigners living in Hangzhou list, and she suggested we visit the China Academy of Arts Xiangshan campus. It was designed by Wang Shu, who in 2012 was the first Chinese citizen to win the Pritzker Prize, the world's top architectural award. Christina herself is an architect and relocated to China for work. When I moved here, everything was strange for me. And, uh, but then, suddenly, I think I started loving uh, in, uh, living here in Anjou. Oh. And this really uh, always surprised me every day. So there was a bit of an adjustment period, I suppose? Of course. Yeah. But now, you know, I think it's just, you just need to start living here and then everything becomes very easy. And uh, people are amazing, very, very care, mm. they, and also, I think I can find everything here. What's the year been like for you? Oh, I it's very fine. The China Academy of Art is reputed to be the most prestigious and influential fine arts college in China. It was the first art university and first graduate school in the country's history. The more time I spend roaming around campus, the more I think I should have done my six and a half years of tertiary education here in Hangzhou. It's completely different from Italy, of course, but mm. it's, a, it's an amazing place. Always so you, surprise me every day. Oh, you enjoy the vibe that you get from, yes. from Hangzhou. Yes, it's really different. Mm. In what way is it more, more the, the, the contrast, like the oriental and the modern? Or? Uh, because really you can see how fast is developing in mm. Anjou now. But mm. in the meantime, also you can see that still something from uh, the past, mm. from uh, the tradition is still alive. Mm. So that uh, is something that I really like. Mm. Hopefully we can get up really high as well. They, since that they fly. I'm no architect, but I know that I really like this place too. The buildings here are bold yet buoyant and seamlessly balanced with the surroundings. Christina tells me the designs are contemporary reinterpretations of local customs. They're built using conventional Chinese construction methods with modern media like glass and metal and feature reclaimed materials like old roof tiles, even underfoot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do either of you have a tip that you could give foreigners visiting Hangzhou? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? Mum? Mums always know what to say, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think one tip is that if you come to Anjou during the summer, mm -hmm. you have to remember that it's extremely hot. Mm. Hot and humid. Mm -hmm. So maybe the maximum you can dress is just a short clothes in, or dress 
in silk. In silk? Yes. Oh. You can buy here. It's the, the city of the silk. Oh, there you go. Speaking of silk, it just so happens that number eight on our list is the manager at a transnational textile company in the middle of the city's commercial center. But they produce household Gurjan, fabrics. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Merhaba, this is Gurjan Kaya from Istanbul, Turkey. I have been lived in Hanju more than two years. Uh, I have been in different cities around the world and uh, I had different experiences. But uh, Hanju is the one that's making me more excited about the city. Because Hanju is an international city. Meantime, we can we can experience the Chinese tradition as well. Hanju is a, not a small city. Meantime, it's not a mega city like Shanghai and Beijing. So we can find whatever we want as a foreigner, but plus we don't lost ourselves in the city. Home textiles. We are doing like uh, window decoration. Instead of staying in his 28th floor office and helping me pick out dream curtains for my imaginary home, okay, Gujan decides to take me for a spin. In Hanju, it's very convenient to drive. And yeah. it's safe and it's good. Yeah. The traffic can get pretty bad though, right? It is. Yeah. But if you like to drive to city centre in rush hours, it may take you like more than one hour to go. Oh, jeez. But if you go in normal time, yeah. uh, to have some coffee in Shifu, yeah. I think I can go there like in 20 minutes. Uh -huh. In many cases, because Chinese people, they have really uh, hospitality and uh, they love foreigners, they love to be kind, they love to help. So for us, we feel like in paradise in Hanzhou. Oh, you're special here. Yeah. If some other drivers see me, yeah. they look me and they look again. Like. <laughs> <laughs> they do a double take, right? Exactly. They don't see much of foreign drivers. Yeah. Because in Hangzhou, taxi is very convenient, it's uh, very cheap, and uh, you can find we can find them is very quickly. Yeah. You don't need to wait for a long time. Mm -hmm. Plus now with this new applications on mobiles. Yeah. You know, with uh, some companies like Uber or some others. Yeah. It's, it's very convenient. Quickly, yeah, it's very yeah. convenient. We zip around the corner to one of the landmarks in Hangzhou, besides the iconic Sihu, or West Lake. Just in case you have a spare few bucks, this gleaming glass sphere is the intercontinental, not far from the Qiantang River. You could also hire Guchan to drive you around in his Chinese Rolls Royce. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. You're the best personal <laughs> chauffeur I've ever had. Thank you. <laughs> oh, before I go though, is there yeah. a tip that you can give to people visiting Hangzhou maybe? Uh, well. You have been unlucky because uh, you didn't catch by the heavy rains. Uh huh. But uh, Hangzhou is getting really, really cold in winter time. Ooh. So for the ones who's coming in winter to Hangzhou, mm -hmm. it's better they keep really, really warm clothes with uh -huh, them uh -huh. and uh, maybe thick blanket. Thick blankets at yeah, night. Because it's really like really cold. You can feel from your bones. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah, See you, good time. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. Bye. Coming up next, I go as international as it gets in Hangzhou, from school carnival to soccer kick around, and then as local as it gets, but with a camera. My name is Gretchen. Um, I hail from the United States of America. Um, I've been living in Hangzhou with my family for about two years now. Uh, it's a great place. You know, to tell you the truth, when we found out that we were moving here, we moved here with my husband's work, um, I knew nothing about China and Hangzhou. I had never even heard of Hangzhou. I didn't even know how to say Hangzhou. I was like, Mom, I'm moving to a place called Hangzhou. That's as much as I knew. Nonetheless, uh, we got here and it was just a culture shock like no other. Um, it's like falling into the rabbit hole and you find yourself in wonderland. Um, and I think that's why I like Hangzhou so much because you just never know what to expect. Every day is an adventure, mostly good, some challenging, um, but the hustle, the bustle, the uh, organized chaos that is day-to-day -day life on Hangzhou streets is just amazing. 
you know, I think that's what I like best about it, and I think that's what I'm going to miss most about living here in Hangzhou when we leave. So, thank you. Thank you for listening to me. More like thank you for giving us 73 seconds of your precious time, Gretchen. Anyway, Hangzhou International School, or HIS, is a co-ed nursery to grade 12 institution, with more than 300 students enrolled from 30 nationalities. What's happening today is a fundraising run, plus all sorts of food, games, and fun. Gretchen's a full-time mother of three, and she's also one of the busy organizers of this event, and I'm running around like a headless chook trying to chase after her. Oh, there she is! We have staff from all over the world, which is just absolutely amazing. It's like the United Nations, right? It's it completely <laughs> like the United Nations, uh -huh. you know, as you see, like I'm walking from person to person to person, you know, talking to an American, talking to a Colombian, talking to Indians. It's just, it's a really, really good feel, yeah. you know, if the rest of the world could be like it is here at HIS. <laughs> That's so it's cool. It's our biggest charity event of the yeah. year, and it's our basically our last full school event of the year. Oh, nice. So. Well, you know what? I'm not going to keep you any longer. <laughs> Okay. We have so much stuff to do, but yeah, go okay. on and uh, get busy. Okay, we'll do. We'll do. I'll talk to you later. Bye. I have to admit, there's a gooey bit of childhood nostalgia bubbling inside me right now. I could almost recreate this school fate back in Sydney in the 90s, except I'd be that gawky, dorky, bespectacled tomboy breaking her buck teeth on gobstoppers. Nowhere nearly as cool as this one. And here is another running for the year. Visible, yet often overlooked, the expat population in China is as much part of the social fabric of the citizens, adding flavor and variety to an otherwise largely monocultural nation. Their experiences and the resulting anecdotes reveal additional layers to a city, which, in many instances, would be invisible to outsiders like me. Honestly though, I don't even feel like an outsider anymore, thanks to the foreigners I've met so far, like Gretchen. Right before I leave, I managed to trap the busy bee one last time. So, I'll see you guys later. Bye guys. I think everything's good now. <laughs> Another problem solved. Oh, okay. Awesome. I, I think it's very important to understand that this, you know, from a Western perspective, is a very different culture. Not bad, not good, it's just very, very different. Mm -hmm. um, and so if people are looking to travel in China at larger than Tangzhou, um, which I, I truly believe you, you need to, to step back into time and, and go walk around West Lake and, and the pagodas and whatnot, yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely worthwhile. To recognize that it's not going to be, you know, four-star hotels and you know room service every night. Mm -hmm. That you know you need to be kind of flexible and open-minded and adventurous. Uh, always carry tissue. Always carry <laughs> hand san sanitizer and always carry cash because a lot of times you just it won't take anything else. All right, so bring a backpack full of that stuff and you'll <laughs> exactly. be set for Hangzhou. Then you're good for Hangzhou. All right, yeah. Okay, look, I'll let you go. Okay, thank okay. you so much. Okay, okay. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. bye. <laughs> Off she goes. Run, 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 run. <laughs> My next stop, another school, but more age-appropriate this time. It's in Xiaosha District, about 30 kilometers northeast of downtown Hangzhou, and it looks like I'll be chasing number 10 around, too. I'm looking for a Roberto, he's from Argentina and apparently he's on the soccer pitch but I don't know what he looks like, so... Hello! I think I heard them calling his name. Roberto, Roberto! Oh, that's him, that's him, that's him, that's him. Ah, Roberto! Roberto! Hey, hi everybody! Hola, como les va? My name is Roberto, I'm from Argentina, and I came to Hangzhou to study. I'm taking a master class in international trade at Chexian, Gonsha and Dashue. And I'm so happy to be here because it's amazing how fast everything is developing in Hangzhou. I think that it was a very good decision for me to come to China to study. And I, I'm wondering about how to continue staying here after finishing my, my school since I really like to be part of this society and trying to do some business in the future. Why did you choose Hangzhou in the first place? In fact, 
in the beginning I was planning to come to maybe Beijing, Shanghai, yeah, the most the popular and the big city and the only one that I knew in my country. But I was studying Chinese with a Chinese professor in my country mm -hmm. and she advised me to come to Hangzhou because she told me that it was a small city but you have all the all the facilities from the big city. Has it been a good eight months? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm studying international trade, so in the future I'm planning to do some business between Latin America and China. Oh, and Hangzhou is the think... perfect place for business, isn't yes, it? Yes, I think so, because yeah. it's so, so close to Shanghai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's an amazing place. I can think about the future in, in China, in Hangzhou. Located around 160 kilometers southwest of Shanghai, Hangzhou is the political, economic and cultural nucleus of Zhejiang province, not to mention a major tourist destination too. <laughs> this is very serious talk while I'm mucking around, but it's a different ball game here. Hangzhou was the capital of the Southern Song Dynasty 800 or so years ago, and today it's one of the capitals for investment and entrepreneurship. If it's any indication of the city's business potential, Alibaba's headquarters are here in Hangzhou. I don't think I'd be surprised if everyone on this team had plans to enter Hangzhou's commercial ecosystem. I mean, they certainly have the right attitude. We scored, we won. We got two. Three, 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 two. And you can come all the way to Siasha campus, right? And have a yeah, kick yeah. around with all the uni students. Yeah, 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 yeah it's an amazing place too. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> Back in downtown Hangzhou, I meet victim number 11. Well, be careful! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> well, I have a lot of Beautiful. cameras. Oh, yeah? No, not this one, this, this one. one. Oh. Oh, Clearly, I haven't it. used one of these before. <laughs> I'm like, what, how do you no. do this? <laughs> Bonjour, uh, hello. Well, my name is uh, Jonathan Unlu. I'm uh, French from France. I'm uh, the director here of uh, the, the Alliance Française, which is a French cultural center. Um, I lived in uh, eight different countries before coming here, so I'm quite used to, to live abroad. But here I really find a good quality of life. I found people uh, very open and friendly. Uh, there is a lot of curiosity because I'm, um, I'm a foreigner and we're in a city where there's not so many foreigners uh, and I don't speak a, a word of Chinese except, except a, a few, uh, few words uh, that I will not say now because I, I'm ashamed. Um, but uh, still people are very friendly. Everybody knows me now uh, in the area where I live or where I work and um, uh, when I have to, to ask for something people are very friendly, they, they help me. They, 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 they just uh, give me what they think I'm asking for. Uh, so at the end I always get at least not what I want but uh, something interesting sometimes. Uh, especially in the restaurants when I, where I, I cannot order properly. So that's the, 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 the funny part of uh, my life uh, here in Hangzhou. What I really like about uh, living here is that uh, I really feel like I'm uh, at home. The life is not so in a rush like, uh, like in Shanghai for example. So that's the that's the, the thing I appreciate really here in uh, Hangzhou. Jonathan arrived in Hangzhou in September 2014 with his wife and two very young children. Today he's taken the morning off work and conscripted me for a casual camera wielding campaign down a very local lane near his place. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love the locals here. Thank you very much. <laughs> when it will be ready, I will come back to show them. Oh, he said when it will be ready, I will come back to show them. Oh, he said when it will be ready, I will come back to show them. Oh, he said when it will be ready, I will come back to show them. Oh, he said when it will be ready, I will come back
可以啊、呃、回来这里给你们看一下。耶，他是杭州的，他住这里的。他是杭州的。对对对，他住住这里附近的。<笑> I love the locals here. They're so cute, so friendly. I can see why you like coming here. Yeah. It's not so big uh, as a foreign community here. Yeah. You know what is funny is when you walk in the streets and you 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 cross you 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 well you meet someone that you don't know or yeah. even if you don't meet you know we're just crossing by like this and we say hello to each other. Oh, Still, you, you mean know, the foreigners? Right? The foreigners. It's like we are in a small village, you know. It's so a that's, small community. Yeah, yeah. So that's funny. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, it's not like Shanghai or Beijing no, where no, every no, third no. person is a yeah. foreigner. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Slight exaggeration, but you get the point, right? Even if these little girls don't. Hello, Chris. Wow. He's just speaking French to everyone. It's awesome. What's your What's your tip, Jonathan? Well, my tip is uh, really if you want to enjoy the the life here in uh, Hangzhou as a young Chinese, you have to ha to, to buy a smartphone if you don't have one to download all these apps that um, uh, ensure you a better life and an easy life. Uh, like for going to the restaurant, you just find paying taxi, as well. Pay, yeah, everything. yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have money in our pockets anymore. Exactly. You know? All pay. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's crazy here. And plus, you can take photos with smartphones too. <laughs> Yay! Coming up next, time to give my tongue and liver a decent workout. Feeling the burn at a chili cooking competition, and then cooling things down with Caipirinha concoctions. rare that you'll find me conch at 8 a.m. on a Sunday, but yes, there are exceptions to the rule of weekend sleep-ins. Hi guys, I'm Katerina from Russia. Привет всем. A few years ago, me and my husband moved to China, and we are very, very excited about uh, Chinese people, Chinese as a country, and food. A few times we have a very funny situation with the. Uh, Chinese food in the Chinese restaurant with no pictures, no English, and we have to use our body language and has hands and do our best to explain what we like to eat. And uh, the people were always understandable and might make some fun of us, but uh, we enjoy. And that's why we like Hanzhou. Lovely, lovely, friendly, fun people. And a few words about the expat community here. We met many people from different different countries and make new friends for example today we attending uh, some chili cooking competition and we here to win that's why i like hanzhou every day is some unexpected adventure katarina's sloppy seconds team is one of two dozen contending for the chili cup there are two categories traditional texas style or open style, any spicy dish that isn't chili con carne. It's a family-friendly fundraiser with live music, eating contests and a lucky draw. You know, Hangzhou isn't just about the West Lake and all the Lonely Planet attractions that you can go to. If you want to get away from all of the crowds, there are lots of community events happening all the time here, like this first ever Hangzhou chili cook-off. And what you need is just some money and a big smile on your face and a belly that's ready for a lot of chili. God comes first, chili comes second. <laughs> <laughs> ah, bless Team Ned Flanders. They would definitely have my vote for best dressed if it wasn't for Katarina's crew. And this guy on the right. Yeah, yeah, right. You're not going to be looking like this after today. No, 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 it'll be more. It'll be more like that. Right <laughs> <laughs> you made it! Yeah. Small expat world indeed. Remember him? One of our 19. From Lithuania. How long did you say you've been in Hangzhou now? Two and a half years. You liked it? So far? I love it. You love it? I love it. <laughs> so that's how you meet all your local friends? Yes. When you're shopping? Uh, shopping, bargain, choosing. Yeah, yeah, and it's, yeah. A, it's, it's another adventure. And another adventure is a taxi driving in Hanzhou. Oh, yes, of course. Now I'm picking, um, visiting cars from pl uh, places where I've already been and show them where to go. Oh, Just yes, that's a good one. Yeah. Good life tip. 
If there was ever a statistical study done on the happiness of expats, I get the feeling that the proportion of happy ones in Hangzhou would greatly exceed that of anywhere else in the universe. If you're wondering how visitors, and residents for that matter, find out about similar community events, chances are it's through More Hangzhou, an English language magazine that's distributed for free in public places. So if I were to ask you um, to give the audience a tip, what would it be? Come to Hangzhou, go to Wonjin village, she eat your own tea, and drink it with your friends. There you go. You have to do that now. You know, it actually might be a good idea to wash down all that zing with a glass or three of Hangzhou's famous Longjing green tea. The other option, boogie, until you're numb. Now, what's the second best beverage to have in Hangzhou after Longjing tea, of course? Nope. Good guess, not a mojito, but Brazil's national cocktail, the caipirinha. Uh, duh. Olá, como está? Uh, my name is Daniela, I'm from Brazil, and I want to introduce you a little bit of Hangzhou city in the way that foreigners see. Uh, I like Hangzhou very much because it's a very beautiful city, uh, very clean and safe. The quality of life here is wonderful. Uh, what I love most is the, the fact that I got so many friends here since I've been living in China for three and a half years. I hope I can stay in Hangzhou for more few years and uh, know more about the culture, uh, improve my Chinese and uh, get to know more about this culture that is amazing. And welcome to Hangzhou. <laughs> I'm in a student-centric section of town, and Latino shindigs are regularly held here. Tonight's bash is specifically Brazilian-themed. Daniela, whose major is in international business, and minor is in cocktails and partying, has invited me to come along to get to know her mates. And they're always glad to meet you too. That's just how it works with foreigners in China. And an instant, invisible bond is forged. So I've got some special uh, backstage passes to the bar, and Daniela's going to teach me how to make the famous uh, Brazilian cocktail, right? Yes, Called yes. Caipirinha. Caipirinha. Yes. Choose yes. Brazilian alcoholic, limo, sugar, and ice. Oh my god! The liquor that's used is called kashaka, a distilled spirit made from sugarcane juice, sometimes referred to as Brazilian rum. We're not even going to measure it, we're just going to pour, pour it right in. Is that a straw? Cheers! Cheers! Saud! Salud! Is that how you say it in Portuguese? Saud! 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 Oh! Yes! Have you been living in Hangzhou? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so. If you were to give someone else coming to Hangzhou a tip about Hangzhou, do you, would you have one that you could um, probably you know, just come up to with? give it time, make sure that you can go out and explore Hangzhou for what it is, and go and see the different restaurants, the different places in Hangzhou, and meet the different people in Hangzhou. So if you stay in your hotel room and don't do anything, then you'll not get to see the great things about Hangzhou. But that's not what you did, right? You, look at you now. I'm Brazilian girlfriend. What else do you want? <laughs> Ah, if only Marco Polo could watch this updated, animate version of his writings about this city. He'd be roughly 750 years old, plus one week, if he joins us next time for part three of our Hangzhou special. You should too!